The chi-square test can also be used in contingency table analysis. A contingency table, also called a cross-tabulation table, involves the simultaneous classification of a variable, uh, sorry, the simultaneous classification of a sample into two or more categorical or ordinal variables. So in this case, in the table above, we've taken a sample of individuals and we've noted which, how many individuals live in each kind of neighborhood, inner city neighborhoods or suburban neighborhoods. For each of those individuals, we've also categorized how they commute to work. Do they walk, ride transit, or drive themselves to work? What we have in the insides of the table then is the simultaneous categorization of observations into these two different variables. The first variable is a categorical variable, which is neighborhood type, and the second variable is a categorical variable, which is commute mode. In contingency analysis, the goal is to determine if being in one category of one variable affects the likelihood of a categorical value in, another vari in, an, in the other variable. For example, does, being, does living in the inner city, so does, uh, does living in the inner city affect the likelihood that a person will walk, take transit, or drive. So we can use this chi-squared statistic to answer that kind of question when we apply it in a contingency analysis. So in this case what we have is a data table. So this is a sample of individuals and two categorical variables and we have the frequencies of all of the different combinations of, of people being in these different uh, categories. In the general case, we can write a contingency table like this. So this is the general case. How, what we are going to have are um, two variables, something that we call the column variable and something that we call the row variable. So commute mode and neighborhood type. Each of these variables is going to have multiple categories. So the column variable are going to have categories C1, C2, maybe C3, it could have two or more categories. And the row variable neighborhood is going to have a couple categories as well. Here, row one, row two. We could have more categories as well. In this case, in this example, we just have two row categories and three column categories. Inside, we have the number of people who are simultaneously in row one and, and column one, or row one inner city and walkers. So in our case we had 30 individuals who were living in the inner city that walked. We had 60 that lived in the inner city that took transit and over here we had 163 suburbanites who drove. Across the right hand side we have the row totals. So capital R1 is the total number of people who live in the inner city. In capital R2 over here is the total number of people that live in the suburbs. Across the bottom we have our column totals. So this is the total number of walkers, the total number of transit riders, the total number of drivers. And in this bottom right hand corner we have the total sample size, N. So in this case our survey was of a 345 individuals.